This is a gross overgeneralization, but I've started noticing that in the Python community, there tends to be a little bit of arrogance when it comes to JavaScript. And in this video, I'm going to make the case that learning a little bit of JavaScript is actually a good thing, and that avoiding JavaScript all the time is actually going to shoot you in the foot too. And I got a nice reminder of that on this hobby project of mine. So this is a flashcard app. Uh, the whole point is that you can uh, see a question appear, uh, you can click here, and then you can see the back side of the card, and then you can say, hey, how well did you actually remember this? So as a user, you can say this was easy or it was pretty good, hard, or you have to practice it again. Uh, the cool thing here is you can also use keyboard shortcuts. So that's a keyboard shortcut, spacebar can just flip the card, and the numbers can then also be used to see the other side. Now the implementation of this at the moment is mainly going through something called HTMX, which is a really cool project. The whole idea is that you write as little JavaScript as possible, and then you might have some sort of an event like a button. And then when that is clicked, we are going to start communicating with the server. And then one thing you could do is you could send some JSON back uh, from the server and then have some JavaScript pick up that JSON on this side in order to update the page. But that's not what's happening here uh, because what I've done with HTMX is I actually send some HTML back and then that's just going to be injected in the page directly. So the whole point here is that the server is actually rendering some HTML and that immediately gets placed on the front end. And the whole thinking here is that you mainly write in HTML and that you don't have to write as much JavaScript. Uh, this way of working is something that is really uh, celebrated in the Python community, I think. It is also a cool way of working. So I'm not saying that HTMX is bad or anything. I actually think HTMX is great, but in this particular case, right? Uh, I do want to show one thing. Suppose I show the answer here and suppose I say, oh, that looks pretty good. Notice that brief lag there. I'll show you again. Uh, okay, let's maybe say that this one was hard. It is so subtle, but there's a brief moment of lag there. And if I grab the network tab, and if I were to hit a button again, then we can actually see that that one request, it contains a response that has all the HTML, so that stuff looks good. But when I look at the timing, this took about 200 milliseconds or so. And that's not necessarily slow, but it's at least noticeable. And in my mind, if I'm thinking about maybe writing the coolest app ever to practice flashcards with, well then I can do the full HTMX thing and say, oh, I'm gonna communicate with the backend and then write no JavaScript whatsoever and have everything update this way. And you know, if you do that, well, you're actually gonna get a slightly worse app. I've got something here locally that's a re-implementation where instead of doing one cart at a time, I'm doing a request, instead I wrote a little bit of JavaScript where at the beginning of a practice session, I get all the cards in JSON and then I just have JavaScript take it up from there. So let's just say this is hard. Oh, that's an instant refresh. Uh, let's do good. Oh, that's also kind of an instant refresh. I can still send a request to the back end such that asynchronously we might update the state as far as spaced repetition goes. That's all fine. But if I care about the user experience and if I care that that experience is really snappy, well, the only way to really do that is to do some of that stuff on the JavaScript side. It is just a better user experience. In a similar vein, a while ago, I was actually figuring out, hey, that HTMX stuff, um, how far could you actually push it? Could you maybe make a game with it? And I actually implemented something, this bacteria game. Now, to be clear, a bunch of this was vibe coded, but the way that this works is that every single cell on this board here is clickable. And the whole point is that you have blue bacteria and you can move that around. So I can click one, request is made. Uh, notice that the board state is actually in the URL as well. And then I can choose where this bacteria moves. It is either able to clone in these green cells over here, or it's just gonna be able to jump to the yellow cells without cloning. If I move it here, uh, you're gonna notice it's gonna clone. And then the red player does a move. And then I can click here again. It can move there again. And again, the red player is able to do a move, but I just, oh, it's laggy. Just You can see the flicker of the screen and there's nothing really you can do about it. And there's just noticeable lag here. Again, if I were to, uh, just quickly inspect the response time. Let's do a click uh, maybe there. Yeah, you know, this is like 300 milliseconds or so. So some of that of course is network and you know, there are maybe ways to improve this. Well, let's contrast that with a full JavaScript implementation that I implemented. And yeah, I am pulling off some fancy tricks here because I also got uh, CSS to work kind of nicely so I can rotate the board and all of that. But then, okay, let's... Uh, Maybe click here, I'm the red player now, let's maybe move it there. Then the blue player can make a move. Actually, uh, let's go against the bot instead. I'm the red player now, I make a move, the blue player does something. Um, 
there's no flickering whatsoever. And yeah, you gotta be mindful that it doesn't become a garbled mess because that's something that can also happen on the JavaScript side of things. But I will say as far as like, oh, is this an enjoyable experience goes? I mean, you can force yourself to do as much as possible with HTMX and HTML that comes back from the server. And for a lot of stuff, you should maybe celebrate that because that's maybe the simplest thing you could do. And it will actually cover 80% of the use case. And you know, that's fine. But if you ever wanna go that extra mile, a little bit of JavaScript really can go a long way. And if you are keen to make, you know, some of the cooler experiences on the web, then why shoot yourself in the foot by denying yourself that little bit of extra knowledge about JavaScript? Because it's not a whole lot that you need, but it can add that little bit of extra polish to make the web app look a lot nicer. If you are a Python person, but maybe you're not a web developer, maybe you're just doing more data science stuff in a notebook, even then I would say there is a lot of merits to just knowing a little bit more about how the front end works. Cause these days you can make these any widgets. And uh, yeah, here's just an example of a widget that I wrote. This is uh, the draw data widget. You're able to actually draw uh, some points on the canvas and then you can make that appear as a data frame, which you can then plot uh, down below here as well. So you can see that as I draw around here, uh, this is, by the way, definitely a Marimo trick. Uh, as I draw here, the cell below will automatically update. But this whole drawing widget thing, if you're trying to learn machine learning things, oh, it's so great that you're just able to draw around. But this is something I just wrote by hand with JavaScript because I know just enough JavaScript to get stuff like this to work. Yes, you have to invest a bit of time to understand JavaScript, but the experience you can make, I just feel that if you don't do any of it, you are at risk of shooting yourself in the foot in the sense that there's just so much more you can do if you're a Python person that also knows just enough JavaScript and you shouldn't be afraid to actually go ahead and apply it. JavaScript is definitely a thing that you can use to make an app better.